This is Red Carpet Flies News on the Fly, bringing you daily, unique, and interesting entertainment, celebrity, and luxury news. Before we get started, you know what to do. Like, follow, and subscribe to Red Carpet Fly, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single News on the Fly episode. Let's get into these headlines. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. Macy Gray and the trans comment she made on Pierce Morgan. How do you guys feel about this, and where do you stand on this issue? Ooh, I feel like we're in some dicey territory. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the comments singer Tracy Gray made on the Pierce Morgan show earlier this week. To make sure I give you guys all the correct information, I'm going to reference this Entertainment Weekly article. So according to Entertainment Weekly, Gray discussed the confusing state of gender identity, specifically referencing the whole he, she, they pronoun usage. Though she said she agreed with Morgan's stance on supporting trans rights for fairness and equality, she also agreed with his views that trans women born to obvious superior physical bodies should be prohibited from competing against cis women in sports. I totally agree, she said, and I will say this, and everyone's going to hate me, but as a woman, just because you change your parts doesn't make you a woman. Sorry. She continued, if you want me to call you a her, I will because that's what you want, but that doesn't make you a woman just because I call you a her and just because you got surgery. It's these last two statements that got the internet into a frenzy and people are calling her transphobic. I'm going to tell you right here and now, I don't think Macy Gray is transphobic. Gender identity issues is a tricky topic to navigate, one, because it's a new identity to traverse, and not everyone has the same understanding of trans people and what it means to be a biological woman. To me, trans women are women, but they aren't biological women, and while they can identify with women on quite a few things, there are just some things that trans women will never be able to understand or experience because they aren't biological women. Like for instance, having a period, having a baby, or menopause. And I think that's what Macy Gray was trying to get at here. Transgender comedian Flame Monroe, who's quickly becoming one of my fave comedians, spoke about this and so did T.S. Madison. You know, everyone is trying to navigate this brave new world and trying to get it right. You know, women have been an oppressed group of people as well. And I think some, not all, and not Macy Gray, want to make sure that biological women's issues and rights don't get dismissed. I was watching some YouTube video the other day and someone brought up the topic of abortion and that this issue is something that transgender women can sympathize with, but they will never know what it's like to literally have the government or an outside force try to regulate their body. When you really start diving deeper into the subject of gender identity, it can really be a complicated subject. But enough about that. I want to hear from you guys and know what you guys think about this issue and what you thought about what Macy Gray said. Comment below and let me know your thoughts. So in luxury news, a tech millionaire who made his fortune developing automated cars has purchased a former Air Force base. He is now seeking help on Reddit to activate a 25-foot-tall Cold War era radar system so he can hunt UFOs. You can't make this up, people. So according to luxury launches, William Sachiti, a robotist, artificial intelligence expert, serial entrepreneur, founder and CEO of a driverless car manufacturing company, which is known for being the UK competitor of multinational incumbents such as Google and Tesla Inc., has splurged on a massive 25-foot-tall Cold War era radar system to hunt UFOs. Yes, that's right, hunt UFOs. The massive system is located on the Royal Air Force Base, Natishiad, an air defense station in England. It was advertised for sale with an asking price of $4,780,000 in 2010, but it was recently purchased by Sachidi for much less. Commenting on it in a statement to the Daily Mail, he said, I will find a way to bring this to life and let people choose the best way to use it. If people want to hunt UFOs, I guess we're hunting UFOs. This thing could do for others what Star Trek did for me as a kid. Sachidi took to Reddit to seek help for his new purchase. Help, I want to bring this back to life, he wrote anonymously. However, users were quick to guess it was him. I didn't even know you could purchase an Air Force base. Did you? Actually, I guess I did know that because isn't that what Tyler Perry did in Atlanta when he purchased Fort Gillum and made it into Tyler Perry Studios? I guess when you hear about something like this on its face, it just sounds weird and crazy. And I don't know if this is just a rich person just spending money or if there is some actually meat on these bones. It sounds silly and a waste of time, but then again, so did electric cars, the internet, and space travel. All things sound silly and made up until they're not, right? 
So I say tinker away. Maybe Sachidi will actually stumble on a discovery or something. And it's not like he'll be doing this alone. He has enough money to hire the right people to help him figure out the mysteries of space. You know, the world needs more tinkerers and people interested in inventing stuff and discovering things. So I can get behind this purchase. Moving on, new movie alert. Netflix is coming out with an animated movie called Guritema, an excellent adventure. Anyone familiar with Sanrio, the creators of Hello Kitty and Kuropi, know what I'm talking about. Uh, if you can't guess, I love Hello Kitty. I started off with Kuropi and quickly moved on to Hello Kitty. But Guritema has stolen my heart. It's the lazy egg that's so apathetic towards life. Ugh. According to Time Out, Netflix is releasing a CG animated series based on Guritema this year. According to the show's synopsis, Guritema is about to set off on a journey to reunite with its mother. The quest won't be an easy one, as our egg protagonist can't quite remember how long it's been since they went their separate ways. This egg is famous for its aversion to any movement or any kind of activity that involves sitting up, so it's going to be interesting how this movie plays out. I follow the Guritema IG account, and there are a lot of short animated videos about a day in the life of this egg. If you can't tell, I'm really excited, and I will be watching. A release date has yet to be announced. Julia Roberts and George Clooney are back in A Ticket to Paradise. A Ticket to Paradise follows a divorced couple that teams up and travels to Bali to stop their daughter from making the same mistake they made 25 years ago. It's kind of a reverse parent trap. Instead of the kids trying to bring their divorced parents together, the divorced parents are trying to break up their kid's wedding. It's kind of crazy. Julia Roberts and George Clooney always make a great team on screen, and it's nice seeing them back together again. The movie is set to premiere on October 21st and can be watched on streaming platforms such as Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon Prime. Lastly, a new Planet of the Apes movie is going into production this year. According to Collider, the new continuation of the Planet of the Apes series from director Wes Ball in collaboration with screenwriter Josh Friedman is said to still be in development and is planned to start shooting at the end of the year. This was claimed by Steve Asbell, 20th Century Studio President, in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter. In an interview meant to celebrate Asbell's 20th year at the company, he discussed many of the upcoming projects that audiences can expect to see. After alluding to a new Planet of the Apes film, when discussing the studio's planned releases in 2023 and 2024, Asbell was asked what was new with the Planet of the Apes film and he responded simply with, we are expecting a draft very shortly and it's West Ball attached to direct. We hope to go by the late summer, early fall. This is super exciting because the past few Planet of the Apes have been really good. I'm actually surprised so many people like it. I I'm actually surprised I like it because it's one of those super niche sci-fi series, but those are always the good ones. War for the Planet of the Apes was kind of boring. I think I fell asleep halfway through the movie, but the other Planet of the Apes have been really Really good. Are you guys excited to see any of these movies? Comment below. I know there are a lot of movies coming out, so if I didn't mention them here, let me know. What do you guys want to see? Comment below and let me know. Anyway, that's it for today, guys. If you would like to receive text notifications of when I post news on the fly episodes or my celebrity red carpet interviews, please send a text to 917-502-4379 and say, I want to get fly text. Once subscribed, you will start receiving text messages regarding news on the fly episodes or celebrity interviews. Also, if you have a business product, service, YouTube channel, or social media account that you would like me to promote on my channel, please email redcarpetfly at alexi at redcarpetfly.com to get rates for advertising. Lastly, please like, follow, subscribe, and share our YouTube channel, Red Carpet Fly, and also follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Red Carpet Fly. And until tomorrow, always stay fly.